International Culture Lab it was founded 38 years ago in Chicago. So I'm very excited to continue the work we've been doing for a couple of decades now. We do a lot of ritualistic sort of movement. Women gathering together, doing movements that are symbolic, where we're, we're feeling the movements, we're doing movements, and also attaching emotions to them. We create rituals in sentient dance circles. A ritual that came from the essence to open the most pure side of the human expression. I uh, have been working in the last two decades in the USA trying to connect ritual, Bhutto, Mexican connections and traditions with a new sense to develop our access into our sacred and pure purity side through spirit and body that came from Japan asking ourselves what is the essence and, and, and the meaning of uh, the most deep expression of our soul. Super excited to be part of this uh, whole festival and to be here on this special, very special, lovely, lovely stage, sideshow stage at Coney Island. And I really feel the history here and very charming. This piece is called Tatiana's Shadow and it was inspired by um, my love for Jacques Tati, who's a French filmmaker and comedian. The whole idea of this piece is beings coming from an angelic realm down to earth to relive a lifetime of love and tragedy and sorrow uh, within a cabaret setting in the early 1900s on Coney Island. I'm Pink Velvet Witch. I'm a surrealist, a performance artist, a multi-instrumentalist, and uh, I have created a piece that we are performing today at the Ritual Cabaret Festival here in Coney Island at the legendary Sideshow by the Seashore. My background in Ritual Cabaret is mostly rooted in my uh, concept of being a practicing witch. And um, I feel it is very important within the realm of uh, performance to always like add to the ambience. Listen to my voice, let it soothe you. You have to stay calm. I am made out of God! How can someone be made out of God? <laughs> the piece that we're working on today is based on a 1933 piece written by Andre Breton, The Irrational Knowledge of the Object, a piece of pink velvet and um, very influenced by Breton's manifestos and by the whole movement of surrealism. And uh, the idea of tying that in with spirituality, with uh, primal magic practices, that's what, to me, spiritual ritual cabaret is. I mean, theater is completely condensed with rituals in its, in its own right, and so they definitely marry well together. I really feel like in terms of the movement and the amount of space I take up on stage definitely informs a masculine energy as well as the detailing of one of the masks used and the feminine energy lives within the Nega mask like the 
the be all and end all spirit within the piece. So transforming it between the two masks envelopes and changes the energy for the wearer. One of the groups that are performing here today, Maplewood Gardens, and um, I just love the combining of the two. It's a traditional uh, costume choice for us to be in robes. We have uh, we tra have traveled the country with a case full of robes for all occasions. All different colors. Um, but uh, we really like the simplicity of the robes and sort of um, their leanings in terms of um, religious sex and it uh, is a uh, nice way of separating it from just plain clothes or street clothes but it also doesn't feel um, fully performative. I feel like eye contact is super disruptive too. It's not something that happens on a regular basis and it's so vitally human. Uh, you can really tell where a person is uh, just by looking in their eyes and you know you fall in love and you see people be terrified and see people who can't stop laughing because it's such a uh, uncomfortable moment or such a just out of the norm it's yeah it's so beautiful and that feels spiritual to me yeah and especially in a space where um, not knowing any people and this is our first time performing in New York and performing at Coney so um, it was it was a really great way to like make a really intimate connection really fast with everyone in the audience and I think that's something with the work that we do it feels like a gift like we want to give something to the audience but also um, with the way that our performances are it always feels like we're getting a gift from yeah. the audience also. I'm Lou Mandolini. Um, tonight I performed a work in progress titled Bearded Lady of the Bowery. Um, and I created an immortal showgirl who gets cursed with both a full beard and immortality. I was fascinated by um, the bearded lady character. I personally identify as non-binary, so I'm always drawn to characters both uh, historically and um, contemporary that mix gender lines. For me, researching both freak shows um, and genetic mutations is a fascination and a passion of mine. Come As You Are, for me, um, the first time I drove a car alone by myself, Come As You Are came on the radio. For me, it's this assertion of independence. Um, obviously, I think the irony in the song and in terms of Kurt's lyrics saying that he doesn't have a gun and we know his untimely demise. Um, to me, in terms of being a genuine performer and always being true to yourself and against the nonsense that seems to come and go with in New York City. Kurt was sort of someone who stuck to their guns, and so it helped me to find and create a character who also stuck to their guns over time throughout many years as the city changed. Talk! I have a cook! My vagina, click, clock. Pretty strong dickery duck. On the cheek. Let's get coffee some time next week. Yeah. Uh, Harder, faster, soft or slow. I'm clipped on cock, lock open, close, undo time, and as it moves, it moves and slows and slows and moves, and somehow you can begin to feel your sun and your moon pulling you in and out. Uh, the whole idea of the ritual cabaret that we have this weekend, that Buto, which begins in Japan, is interpreted by Diego, this incredible teacher from Mexico, and Gabriel and Nick from Cultural Theater Lab, 
have brought it to Coney Island and are exploring cabaret, even ritual cabaret, and bringing in performers aside from the workshop that Diego was running is creating this fascinating mixture um, that's very different than what usually happens on our Coney Island stage, and yet fascinating. especially here with all these professionals now that we had here, oh, to really right. give the performers in the festival what they want, exactly what they want, yeah. and uh, more than what they want. And so it's, uh, it's satisfying to give the artists that, as much as it is for, for us to do our own art. I mean, in a lot of ways, this is the art now. Of, it's sort of our, our producing art. Right? Yes, yes, in this particular instance yeah. especially. But we worked with a lot of really great people um, right from the start, starting with Brandon Perdomo. It's funny how, how worlds collide. I, I think the city is a web that starts and ends in the center. Um, so some of these uh, performers, these artists uh, that I've met, we've either performed together, we've taken photographs together, uh, we've seen each other's performance. Um, some were recommended to me, some were you know, in the Coney Island community. Um, just makes sense. I, I think the task of putting together uh, what ritual cabaret can be expressed as was um, similar to, I don't know, taking a photograph or, or painting or drawing a, a, a piece. It's work on intuition. I, I think everybody comes with different flavors and shades and colors of a, a very similar, um, similar context and um, I, it was it was a lot of hive minding and, and intuition placing. And when it all starts coming together, and you see what all of the work and the energy that everybody has put into it, from uh, Coney Island USA staff to each of the individual acts, how hard they've worked to do their 15 minute piece, um, how hard Diego and uh, his ensemble over here, how they're toiling away when they came in and started setting up their thing here. And, you know, just, you just, that's when the payoff comes and you remember why you like doing it, even if it's kicking and screaming the entire way. You know, it's just really exciting. It's exciting work. Diego is rehearsing next door. Um, he's having a workshop, and that's why the performance is different every night, because uh, he prepares for a really long time uh, before he ever gets here. I believe in ritual, I believe in Muto, I believe in cabaret. Coming from the Western cultures to reconnect ourselves into our intimacy. Basic. I accept to be here and to push everyone to move all the individuals 
you know, staffs and, and, and challenges to connect with a collectiveness sense, to get a sense of evolution. It's just been really wonderful to see what Nick and Gabby um, have grown in this time um, with the amazing brand and also joining the team. So I've just been really, um, really impressed and um, excited about what the festival has become over the years. So really excited to be part of it in a different way this year. I need to say that uh, motivation that uh, pushed me and allowed me to be here directing all these incredible dancers is just to transcend the idea of genders. What is masculine and what is feminine? When we are both, you know, today, tonight, we get into the point, and maybe for some of them, Charlotte, when I said, okay, can you go and touch your androgynous? Please, why not? We are here to touch that. Uh -huh. Finally, I think everyone get and surrendering into that term, symbol, or it's not archetype because in, in, the, in the modern society, in the Western society, we don't accept the archetype of androgynous at all. Mm -hmm. But I am using because I think my mother and my father is with me. And finally, I really don't know who I am. And that is the basic question of the whole process three days ago, until now. Who I am, I don't know. I am my mother, I am my father, but I am more than masculine and feminine. And that is the future, that is our evolution. This is my first time performing at Coney Island, and it was my first time doing burlesque, sort of, and my second time singing live in front of people. I feel like it was only yesterday that we were pouring over a book of surrealism and digesting this piece together, so I'm excited to bring it to fruition on the stage finally. If you think what is being featured in this film is a little bit weird, weird is good. We encourage experimentation. You should take chances. You should go be in things and pay to buy a ticket for things that are a little bit different and a little bit challenging. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ritual Cabaret.